What's up? How's it going, man? Good. Um, good. Can't complain. Oh, good. I like the hoodie, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's uh, bar stools. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool, yeah. man. Uh, I'm a well, fanatic. If I could wear hoodies yeah. every day, I would. Well, we can. Uh, I am recording, but we can go ahead and jump into it if you're. If yeah, you're cool with yeah, it. yeah, yeah. That's fine. Awesome. Well, I will. Uh, by the way, you can curse. You can plug whatever you want at any time. Awesome. It's it's uh yeah. It's gonna be a fun time. So we're yeah. gonna have fun. All right, good. Everybody tells me that they're like, you can curse. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I, can, I can I can speak I can speak without it, but all right, that, that makes it easier. Don't uh, you don't have to. Out. It's I get the question a lot because I I didn't tell people that, and then people are like, can I curse on this? Because people tell me I give off real Mormon vibes, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I I usually just like if I'm on TV or I'm, I'm on the radio, I'll say uh, I'm like, how passionate can I get? And they're like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, at least, at least you knew what I meant by pet. How Italian can I be? Can I, can I bring my kid in and just beat the shit out of her on camera? Can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Is that can I discipline my kids in yeah. front? Of, Cause like, that's the funny thing about Italian parents. Like there was like always like a competition. Like we'd go over my cousin's house and he would do something stupid. And my uncle would like grab him by the ear and like rip his head off. And uh, they would always, he would always say, I don't care, people over. Good. And I got a witness that if I kill you, I had a reason. I'm like, that, that's, it's not going to go like that if you kill your kid, number one. I mean, I'm not testifying <laughs> on your behalf. I don't know if that's what you're insinuating. <laughs> like, that's my cousin, and you just beat the shit out of him. So <laughs> if this goes to court, I'm on his side. But oh, it, it was God. always, I mean, every, every time I'm being interviewed, um i'm like how italian can i get and they're like you can't curse i'm like okay <laughs> so <laughs> the, you know surprise so I, I may not look it at all but i'm italian american as well yeah you look it and uh oh thank you yeah, thank you we, Every- we don't we don't all look like we belong like in a in a fucking butcher shop like there are you know like my a friend of mine he, he's a hundred percent italian and fair skin blue eyes light light brown hair yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So w- whenever I go to Italy, people are like, oh, you are a German. And I'm like, no, yeah. no, I'm, I'm Italian. And I remember I went to go study abroad there once. And then right. they had this whole little neighborhood newsletter. And they were like, my name's Stefan. They're like, oh, uh, what, this new American boy from Michigan named Jeff is here. Blue eyes. Great. And I was like, no, no, Stefan from Arizona. But it doesn't matter to you guys. So, uh. Oh, my God. You know, it's funny. It's just they're so... I mean, I always say this. I, I don't care what nationality you are. Old school is old school. And they come from the other side. Like if you are German, if you're Argentinian, whatever you are, if your parents or your relatives are from the other side, like they were not born in this country, the mentality mm-hmm. they have is extremely intriguing because I can't figure it out. Um, but yeah, they, they'll single you out. I call it uh I call it Italian racial profiling in a sense. Like we went, uh, we went this um Friday night to a really good Italian restaurant in Queens. And mm-hmm. um, we're sitting down, and, you know, the guy that runs the place, he owns the place, you know, off the boat Italian guy. And he just makes all these concoctions. And uh, like, you won't eat anything normal there. Like he does a ravioli with a, um, a like almost like a poached egg inside. He's like, you gotta oh. cook it two minutes and 31 seconds. I go, that's pretty <laughs> precise. He goes, it's gotta be. I go, all right. Sorry, Steven Spielberg of the Culinary Institute. I go, why the fuck are you so creepy when you do that? He goes, because if it's a too if it's a too long, it's going to be a hard boiled egg, and that's not good. And if it's a too short, you're going to get a salmonella. I go, salmonella? What is that? Like a flavor salmon that you have? You fucking wop. <laughs> and then a buddy of mine, so he he brings over um, frozen espresso, right? It was absolutely delicious oh. but it was in like these champagne champagne flutes and uh he yeah. brings it over and he starts speaking italian to me and a couple of my buddies we were there five guys and it was one guy that wasn't italian irish guy and nice. uh he, he comes over to my table he goes it's espresso fresco bellissimo i go oh all right puts it down then goes over to my boy santino he goes espresso fresco and he goes yeah yeah i'll have some 
He goes to my, he goes to every Italian guy. He says the same thing. Que yeah. este bellissimo, bellissimo, espresso fresco. Goes over my Irish buddy Mike. He goes, "Taste the coffee like a Dunkin' Donuts. You want?" <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, "Oh my god!" And he goes, "Dude, did I just get racially profiled at an Italian restaurant?" I go, "Yeah, yeah. He identified you as an outsider and then spoke to you accordingly. I apologize for his actions." <laughs> Hopefully oh. you don't get this restaurant canceled, <laughs> oh, uh, like everything else. Oh, that is hilarious! And a hilarious story oh, for this podcast, which is a comedy advice podcast with me, your host Stefan Satani, and the person speaking with me and joking with me over the past couple of minutes is none other than the king of off the boat comedy. He just got the award for best comedian of Long Island in 2021, yeah. uh, Anthony Rodia. What's Ooh. up? Yeah, I can't. It, it's so crazy. Like when I, when people were nominated, I said, oh my God, I got nominated for best comedian in Long Island. And that's pretty cool. And I, I mean, I've only been doing comedy for two years. So it, you know, it's, it's weird, man, because it's like the old school guys that have been grinding it out for 20 years will look at me as like, oh, he's a social media pop-up. And then the guys that actually will sit down with me, like I'll have comedians come to my shows and it's like, they almost want to investigate, you know, they come backstage and I'm, I'm not bougie at all, man. I, I'm like. I uh -huh. make people laugh for a living. Like you can't yeah. get like the shit my teachers told me would never amount to nothing is paying my bills. It's phenomenal. And like my teachers, I'll get teachers now that they come to my shows. I'm like, oh, what's up? Did you enjoy the show? You were very good. Yeah. And you wanted to stop me from doing this shit back in 11th grade. How's <laughs> chemistry class treating you? <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy. So when I got nominated, I was like, oh, wow, I got nominated. And I'm like, all right, I don't, I don't want to like make a big deal of something that comedians are going to be like, well, there's only three other comedians in Long Island, douchebag. Like you didn't really get an award. <laughs> but this thing, like I, like I go to like the store and stuff like, hey, congratulations. I'm like, huh. oh, thank you very much. I feel like my wife is like, dude, stop. You didn't win a, a, an Emmy. Like I'm sitting, I'm going, well, I, uh, it all started when I was young, really. I knew I had it in me. And I'd like to thank my parents for encouraging me. And my wife's like, Aunt, you're in stop and shop. Shut up. Like the guy <laughs> just said, congrats. Stop giving an acceptance speech. But uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, they had, uh, I think Jim Brewer, he won like six years in a row. So I, I mean, him and I perform at like a lot of the same places. Um, he's, at, I think he's actually, I forgot where he is. Ted. I think he's down in Florida, but I, I, I want to bump into him. I want to just rub it in. I love Jim. I'm such a huge fan of his. But uh, you know, goat boy and stuff back in SNL. But I, yeah, want, I yeah. want a chance to be able to rub it in, like, hey Jim, sorry, buddy, maybe next year. <laughs> you know, I don't want you to feel <laughs> bad about you know the loss. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It's uh, I'm on for I'm, I'm it's a hell of a ride so far, and I'm enjoying it. It's pretty pretty cool. Oh man, it just started to get hot over here in Phoenix. So I'm taking off the hoodie. So. Oh, oh my god, yeah, I still have <laughs> snow in my backyard. I hope you get sunburned through the window. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, it is a pretty big deal. I know you were talking about it on your your live show on yeah. on Facebook Live, where you were saying, I think you get a plaque and everything. You get in the papers and yeah, it's so. pretty cool. They they have like a whole page cut out for me in the magazine. Um, I think seven hundred thousand copies go out. Um, it, it's cool. I mean, listen. I'm, you know, I'm coming to, to Arizona next week. No one in Arizona is like, really, hey man, congratulations on your Long Island win. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of localized, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty big deal on the island. Um, you know, I go to delis and I don't pay, but uh, no, I'd say it's pretty cool, man. You know what it is? I'm, I'm the type of guy that I have, I, I, I put out what I call mini accomplishments. Like I have a goal for a six month span. And then I have many accomplishments that I want to, uh, you know, kind of get to within those six months, like, you know, monthly goals and stuff like that. And it, this, I mean, this was definitely one of them, you know, I mean, to, to be in the business for two years and to win and, you know, there were a ton of good comedians. I mean, you know, Jim Brewer, I mean, Jim Brewer is phenomenal. I mean, he's been around mm -hmm. for so long. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, it, it's a, it's a bigger deal to me than it might be, you know, to someone, you know, sitting in Texas right now going, where the hell is Long Island? You know, well, it's like you can't I'm not going to nationally brag about it, but it's it's definitely something to, uh, you know, kind of check off the box that I have. Yeah, for sure. And I know you were just talking about mini goals and those mini accomplishments that help get you to bigger and, and uh, more grandiose accomplishments. And I think one of the things that also going back to the you've only been doing this for two years, which is two years full time. Yeah, I, uh, August. 
August 2018 was when I created the uh, the Uncle Vinny page, the Instagram page. And then October of 2018 is when I created the Facebook. And um, I, I mean, listen, I had I had shows lined up, but I mean, nothing crazy. And then it just started escalating. And I said, I mean, if I could do this full time and even make what I was making at work, but doing something I absolutely love doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and then uh, I got hooked up with a small agency um, in February, Roger Paul agency, which I mean, he he hustled his ass off for one guy to do what he did was insane. Um, and then March of 2019. Um, was was it 2019? Yeah, I think March of 2019. I uh, I quit my job and did this full time. So yeah, it's been it's been, uh, I think March 18th will be two years exactly that I'm doing this full time. So it's, that uh, is, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. That is so cool. And I know you were working, you were working at a car dealership before yeah. you ended up doing comedy full time. And then yeah. Deadpool two gave you the inspiration. Oh, to you spoke to Dom. I like this. <laughs> All right, you did your background either that, or you're a hell of a stalker. Um, <laughs> I was yeah. sitting behind you at Deadpool two. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see, it's funny now, but if I talk to Dom, he's like, no, I didn't talk to him. Then it's scary as hell. Uh, so I'm going to assume you spoke to Dom. And if you didn't just keep it to yourself, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was Deadpool too, man. I, I went out with Dom, Dom and I worked together, we became very close friends over the years. And, nice. um, we're sitting out watching Deadpool, love Ryan Reynolds, huge yeah. Ryan Reynolds fan. Same. And, uh, I mean, the writers of Deadpool, I mean, if you like cynical, dark humor, that's the movie you have to go see. So I'm yes. sitting there and the movie starts and I'm not laughing. And 15, 20 minutes into it, I'm not laughing. And Dom looks at me and he's like, dude, I can't breathe. How are you not laughing? And it was by far one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me in my life. It's almost like I heard, and it was a packed theater. I heard the audience laugh and mm -hmm. like a switch went off. And I was like, dude, I, I gotta, I gotta do this to an audience. And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I've done comedy in my early twenties, like open mics here and there. I said, but I, I want to get to this. I want to, you know, have sold out theaters and, and have the whole room rumble. And he's like, man, what are you talking about? And I think it got to the point where I was sick and tired of being in a group of people and having everybody laugh and mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. them tell me, dude, you miss your calling. Dude, you missed your window, bro. You should be in comedy. And it all hit me at once. And I'm like, I'm 38 years old at the time. Yeah. I, you know, I've got a, a child. I'm married. I've got, I'm the only one in my household that works. You know, my, my wife stays home with the kids and uh, we leave the movie theater. And I said, dude, you want to manage me? And he goes, manage you with what? I go, I'm going to get back into comedy. And he goes, what? I said, yeah, I'm going to do it part time. You know, if I can yeah. make a thousand dollars a month doing comedy, I mean, it, it would be great. It's an extra, you know, 12,000 a year. So I, just, I want to see what I can do. And then I started making goals. And I remember he came over my house or, or I think we were on the phone and um, he said, what's your, what's your next set of goals? And I said, in six months, I'm going to quit my job and do this full time. And he goes, you're nuts. I go, yeah. I said, okay. I said, well, next year I'm going to start touring. And then all of a sudden shit started happening. And I'm like, this is not normal. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, dude, shit is going exactly how I planned. He goes, you know, that, that's what happens when you accomplish goals. I go, yeah, I'm not really used to that. And I remember the day I quit my job, I came home and everybody says, you know, if you quit, don't, don't burn a bridge. Quit, quit responsible, quit respectful, mm -hmm. quit professional and, and let them know what you want to do. Yeah, no, the moment hit me and that, that shit didn't happen. I walked out of a meeting of all my bosses and owners of the company. I remember, I think it was like a question that was asked. They were like, hey, Ann, you're going to have the report. I did finance. So they were like, uh, yeah. uh, we're going to close the month out early. And uh, we need all the reports and all the numbers on our desk by noon. And I was like, fuck this shit. And they're like, I'm, I'm sorry. I was like, I don't need this shit. I give <gasps> you 65 hours a week. We got to have this goddamn meeting once a month. We say the same bullshit. I'm tired. Everyone in this room is tired. I'm going home. And they said, you walk out that door, I go, look, look, look. I quit <laughs> and I walked out and I was like, ripped off my coat, my suit jacket, threw it in the, I was like, yeah, I drove home. First of all, I stopped before I got home. I went to a diner by myself and I had the most unbelievable waffles and pancakes, which is what you should have if you ever quit your job like that. And I, I went home um, and I walked in my house and my wife crushed that moment so quickly for me. <laughs> I was on a natural high and I walk in and she goes, why, 
why are you home at one o'clock in the afternoon? Now, I, I, wor- I, I worked in Greenwich, Connecticut. I live on Long Island. So it wasn't like I went yeah. home for lunch. Ah, and I, gotcha, uh, gotcha. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, I did it. And she's like, you did what? I'm like, a lot of people dream of dreaming. I'm following it. I quit my job. I'm going to be a comedian. Boom. That's, that's determination. This is me living out my dream. And uh, she started crying. And I, I said, oh, that's no. not. Oh, bawling. She was, what? you selfish son of a bitch. And I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's a weird way of saying congratulations. You're proud of me. <laughs> and I said, what, the, what's the problem? She was like, aunt, you're the only one in the house that works. You're not going to pay the bills becoming a comedian. Okay. Get your head out of your ass. And she's like, why couldn't you just do this shit on the side? And I said, because I'm up till four in the morning making videos that I'm at work at eight. I said, I, I'm, I'm draining myself. She was like, yeah. give up comedy. I go, you bite your tongue. I go, this is, I, I'm making people laugh. This is what I love doing. So after she calms down, I said, listen, we, we don't, we're not in debt. We've got money in the bank. Give me until December. Give me nine months. If I don't make it, I'll go back to work. And she goes, all right, so you didn't, you can go back to your job? No, not my job. I'll get another one. I don't think I'm allowed in the building. You're going to have to service your car at another dealership. I said, but why are you, why are you crying? We've got one kid. We've got a house that, you know, you know, it's not like our bills are skyrocketed through the roof. And she goes, um, she goes, I'm pregnant. And I go, well, whose is it, Ooh. bitch? Because this is, <laughs> she's like, Wait, what? I go, this is not good timing. I said, oh, what? And she, and so now I got a, a kid on the way. Oh, shit. Just quit my job. And I think that was the force that, that drove me to kind of just say to myself, I'm not going back to work. I'm going to prove, I had my whole family. You know, you, you're making a mistake. I had my friends, you know, nobody yeah. says they're going to become a comedian and actually becomes a comedian legitimately where they can make a living. And now, I mean, talk to my wife now. Whole different opinion. Yeah. She's Shit. like, oh my God, I went to the restaurant last week with my friends. They didn't charge me because they love you. It's so beautiful how many fans you have. I go, yeah, you're lucky I don't have your reaction on tape. I'd fucking play it. Oh my God. Oh um, so my God. I mean, but-, but it's the pressure, man. I, I think I've always worked well on the pressure. Like my videos... I'll put out a video, um, like a preview. I'll say, all right, tonight at seven, there's a video and this is the title. I don't even have a video. I don't have one scripted. I don't have one videoed. I put that out and now I know I have a seven o'clock deadline where I have to get in the basement and kind of get my juices flowing and make something up. It's, it's comedic suicide. It's not the smartest way. Smartest way would be to make nine videos in one day and then I have them to space out. Yeah, no, I like to give myself uh, anxiety attacks. Dude, okay, so there was a lot there. Yeah. First off, I want to go back to the quitting your job and telling your, your work, fuck you. Because that, I think all me and all of the listeners that have had right. their soul crushed by the corporate the structure yeah. all came simultaneously. Because that's amazing. <laughs> so first off, that- Never give so many people an orgasm at the same time. <laughs> that is something to look forward to. Well, I have a well- problem with just one. So it's- Yeah, yeah. You, you ain't kidding- you're, you're killing it. But, um, and then, and then too, I had heard that on another podcast where you were saying that you just say, Hey, new video up at seven. And then you've got the title maybe, but you're yeah. like, I got to come up with the rest. So I was going to ask, cause I know <clears throat> you do your videos, you do yeah. your live show, you do live stand up comedy. Um, and then I also heard that there's going to be an animated, potentially an animated series with yeah. uncle Vinny and Zia Lucia. A full-fledged streaming cartoon, like a full cartoon platform. Uh, they're going to be less gimmicky looking. They're going to be more of a cartoon-based character. Um, oh, but their same voice, their same personality. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm addicted to writing, man. And I, I couldn't just sit back and just do stand-up. Because I, I, I mean, as you can see, if you don't cut me off, I'll just talk. <laughs> I'll just keep going. There's times that I go so far out into like a rant where I don't even remember why I even started speaking in the first place. Like, like I'll just start talking and just like, yeah. And then when I was six years old, my uncle gave me a bubble bath, thought it was weird, but like, I don't even know how I got there. Um, but I'm, I'm addicted to writing. I'm addicted to comedy. This is the one thing that I've ever done or the only thing that I've ever done that I never got bored of. And mm. it turned into like an obsession. Like, you know, I was in the yeah. car business. I, I was an electrician, um, I had a water route with a big truck that I drove. I got my CDL. 
Um, I got yeah. my, my, I, I have a degree in cardiac ultrasound. I mean, you look at my resume and you're like, dude, how many personalities do you have? Cause this shit doesn't go together. You don't go from a truck to scrubs to a suit. Um, so I, I kept writing and I said to myself, I've got to put my comedy into something else other than just stand up. So the characters yeah. is what builds my audience. My stand up comedy is another form of writing that I do. And then obviously I have to write material for my podcast every Tuesday night to go live on mm -hmm. that. So it mm -hmm. just, it's, it's a way to just I mean, get my juices to stay flow. I can't shut it down. My brain doesn't yeah. turn off. It's, it's, it's a great thing it, when you're in this business, but it's a bad thing because there are times where like, it'll hit me and I'll just, I mean, you, I won't move all day. I'll just stay in one spot and it's just me, you know, absolutely drained. But yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's writing on all different aspects. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think that's a peek inside how you've gotten so successful so quickly. Another thing that I was thinking of uh, array inside the Rodia is the the analytical approach that you take to things. I know that pragmatically you were speaking about many milestones. And then I heard yeah. you on another podcast saying that, you know, every week you're looking at your analytics, you're seeing what is trending, what people yeah. are liking, um, and, and analyzing from that approach. And I think <clears throat> that is so intelligent, first off. And I think that that's also something that you don't see too much with comedians or even entertainers perhaps where they're right. like okay i'm i'm grinding and doing all of this shit for lack of a better word all of this amazing entertainment no it's and a then... lot of shit yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of shit there's a lot of shit to it i mean it's, it's... I, yeah yeah. And, and then I'm also, I'm, I'm analyzing and seeing what works and, and trying to find inspiration. Cause I know that all of your videos are different. All of mm -hmm. your stuff, like your material for your live show is different. And then your stand up. I heard that you have like a different, or at least 80% of the materials also varying in different um, each show, which is insane to me, but it's so cool. And I think that peeling back, um, it, it's making sense seeing how you're you work, and I think maybe the lack of sleep too. Maybe I should only sleep three. Yeah, hours I mean, a night. I mean, listen, I'm I, I was I've always had a love for comedy. I've been addicted to comedy mm -hmm. ever since I was a kid. I mean, I remember my, you know, we're, we're gonna be thinking about shooting my comedy special this year, and nice, uh, and and the idea of the intro, and if anybody watches steals this shit, I'll sue the shit out of you. <laughs> um, but it's it's gonna be retro back to the '80s, and it's gonna be New Year's Eve. I think it was like '88 or something like that, '87. And nice. it's going to be in my aunt's house. We're celebrating New Year's Eve. All the kids, you know, were told to go to bed. The adults were watching Andrew Dice Clay's New Year's Eve special. And I snuck downstairs and I watched the first 15 minutes hiding behind a couch. So we're going to reenact all that. And my dad looks at me and he goes, hey, it's enough for you eyes. Go up the stairs. And I was like, oh, shit. And I, I remember hearing you know, Andrew, you know, with the rhymes and the whole, the whole room was, I mean, my cousins were laughing hysterical and I'm just looking around as like a seven-year-old kid. And I'm like, shit, that's what I want to do. And that would, it, that's what I think my intro to the special is going to be. And then it's just going to kind of fade out and I'm going to be in the green room backstage. There you go. I think I lost the mic. You can hear me? All right. Good. Um, yeah. And I think that's what, you know, when I talk to a lot of people in the industry, they, they, they know I'm creative. Like I, with comedy, I, I hated going to see a comedian twice and hearing the same thing that I heard the first time. I can't, I can't, I mean like two, three years down the road, I'm not even talking yeah. about the same year. So I always told myself when I'm, when I'm performing in a new city, I'm going to write comedy based on that city as a 10 minute opener. Um, and then I'm going to throw in new stories and stuff. Like if I hit up a, you know, Jersey for a second time, I'm gonna give these people, the people that haven't seen me, I'm gonna give them what they never heard anyway. And then if you did come back, you'll hear two or three new stories. I always try to stay nice. very fresh on, on certain events, current events and stuff like that. Um, but mm -hmm. people in this industry, they'll hang out with me for like 15 minutes and they'll see how quickly, you know, an idea comes to my head. Like, um, you know, that whole intro. I mean, I was sitting there just closing my eyes, picturing what do I want my intro to be when we do the special? And that came to mind. Same thing happens with the videos. I get an idea and then I literally sit in my basement as three or four different people. And I have a conversation with myself before I even write anything to paper. And uh, mm. seeing it is, is scary as shit. I mean, my wife will come downstairs and she'll, 
she'll kind of watch me without me knowing she's there. And I'm sitting, I'm going, yeah, but what do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Let him talk. You keep interrupt. And she'll sit there. She's like, oh my God, you're like full blown schizo. And I'm like, well, first of all, you didn't even tell me you were there. I have conversations with four people in, in, you know, in a circle. And then I'm like, all right, yeah, that sounds like a normal conversation. And I write it down. So if you, if you look at my videos, there's so much dialogue in every single one of my videos. It's not just, you know, reactions and facial expressions, but uh, no. it, it becomes, see, I told you, don't know how I got here. Don't even know how it started. I just, if you don't cut me off, it's going to be very it's, I don't get to talk to adults much, much. I have my <laughs> wife, which is, you know, semi-adult because she talks to me in baby talk. And then I have my one-year-old son who just drools and shit, doesn't do much. And then I have my five-year-old daughter who's partially possessed by the devil that has conversations with me when she's in a good mood. So I don't really talk much to other adults. I spoke to the pool guy today. That was great. <laughs> I was like, so what do you do on the weekends, man? You want to get a drink? And he's like, I'm only here to give you an estimate. This is weird. <laughs> I'm like, all right, just trying to trying to have a conversation with an adult, dude. You look like a pretty swell guy. He's like, are you gay? I'm like, no, 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 I'm not hitting on you. Just I just a need friend. a friend. Yeah, a friend. that's it. I just want a friend. <laughs> oh, oh my god, my god. That's, hel- that's hilarious. But no, yeah. this is all great stuff. And you know, I uh, I get to ask less questions because you answer some of them just going through. So I feel yeah, like yeah I, I could probably just leave for a little bit and then come back five minutes. I would still then- be talking. A hundred percent. I have, I've got diarrhea of the mouth, but, uh, no, but it's delicious diarrhea of the mouth. Cause it's just every bit. I'm that's gonna the first edit. time I've ever heard delicious and diarrhea in the, fr- in the same. <laughs> that is delicious diarrhea. I mean, that is exquisite. I mean, I don't, know what you, I don't know what you season it with, but that's phenomenal. <laughs> diarrhea of the mouth. That's great. You heat it up for two minutes and 31 right? seconds. Oh, Oh God. But babe, don't I- worry about dinner. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> don't make anything brown no sauces tonight um yeah it's, you know you know you know what it comes down to and and yeah. as i'm talking about other comedians and stuff i am exactly how i am on stage off stage there's no two mm. different ideas um mm-hmm. you see me on stage that's how i am off stage i don't know how to be serious all the time i don't yeah. know yeah. how not to acknowledge a joke or an opening for a joke and not take it I don't think I've yeah. ever passed on a setup. Like you serve mm-hmm. me up a joke. I could be at a funeral. I'm taking that fucking joke. I'm taking it. I'm serving it up and I'm turning tears into smiles, people. Okay. But I don't, I don't know how to be any other way. And, you know, my wife, sometimes she's like, can you ever be serious? And I go, no, because you, you got one shot at life and I'm going to die laughing. I'm going to yes. die either laughing or die making someone laugh. And I don't want to die with a frown on my face or a pissed off look. Um, laugh as much as you can, man. That's that's why it gets me so so pissed off how this how this whole country is right now. People are so in tuned with looking for negative shit in everything, and it makes me absolutely sick. You know, Mr. Potato Head, and now they're banning Dr. Seuss. Like, the fuck, what offends oh you about green eggs and ham, you psycho? Oh, like, cat it's not vegan. Hat- they, they have, they have race. Dr. Seuss has racist undertones. No, that's how you're perceiving them. Well, there's oh no black God. people in Whoville. There is, there's no fucking Whoville. <laughs> it's fictitious, you psycho. So now these kids have to like grow up with no Dr. Seuss. Uh, it's just come. I mean, listen, oh the mentality right now is either you're with me or you're against me. There's no in the middle. And it's mm-hmm. it's kind of transitioning into comedy. It's like, well, I'll love your comedy yeah. until you hit a nerve and offend me. Well, then you don't you don't appreciate my comedy. You appreciate whatever in lines with whatever your beliefs and views are. And as soon as I step off that, you know, and I tell people, if you're a sensitive person or you're a person that only likes someone that is in line with what you believe, do not watch my comedy because my comedy could be very PC, and then I could just go off into a, a realm that's going to mm-hmm. get dark. It's just, it's comedy and people are, they don't, they don't understand how useful comedy is. I, I always say, man, you, you give me someone that's, show me someone that's laughing and I guarantee that person is not in a bad mood while they're laughing. Yeah. 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 I agree. And, and I think you do such a good job of it too, while talking about things that are 
touchy subjects to some folks. Like recently you mentioned it with, uh, there was an uncle Vinny report that you did with, uh, the yeah, potato head. Report, and then, and then, um, what was it? It was like transgendered kid, uh, glued trans- his hair. Yeah. 20 year old kid on TikTok, transgender glued his head with gorilla glue. And, and you were I- like, uh, yeah, you were like, I'm not making fun of him because he's transgender. I don't care. You can making be whatever you want. He's a fucking idiot. Yes. And I don't care I, if he's transgender, multi-gender, gay, straight, white, black, orange, or blue. He put gorilla glue in his hair after the whole debacle with the girl from Atlanta or whatever she was, a southern that down south that did it. You're you're a jackass. Yeah. And I said yeah. stupidity is universal. Stupidity is gender neutral. Because it doesn't matter what gender you are. If you're stupid, you're stupid. And this particular person was stupid, you know, yeah. and people right away, oh, you're, you're, you're insulting him because he's transgender. And, and that makes you feel uncomfortable. No, it doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. I'll have a fucking beer with a gay guy, a straight guy, a lesbian, a transgender. I don't care if you're a cool person. I don't give a shit what yeah. you do or how you feel or, or, you know, your beliefs that, that, that's you, that's on you. Yeah. But right now, man, it's like people. Right now, the big topic is kids. They're like, well, kids should be able to choose what gender they want. My daughter's mm-hmm. five years old. I have to try to convince her to stop picking her nose and eating it. You think she has the mental capability to know what gender she is if I leave it up to her? Like, if when you're 18 or your, your brain is developed enough where you can make lifelong decisions, you be whatever you want. Like I say, it, if my son grows up and he's like, dad, I really think I'm a woman inside. I, am I going to be happy? No, because the fucking kid's going to grow up with a lot of shit from other people because people suck. But I'm going to support him at right. that age. Right now, I don't think kids should be left up to decide anything. And, and to put that onto a kid where, you know, like Demi Lovato said, uh, you know, gender reveal parties or, or transphobia and all that. It's like, guys, fucking I'm not, stop using your platform to convince people. You want to use your yes. platform to, to express your opinion. That's fine. But. My thing is there's a thin line between convincing and brainwashing. And when you're using your platform to brainwash, well, now you're an asshole and you're not allowing people to think for themselves. And that's what gets me pissed. And I try to use my comedy platform to kind of express that in a comedic way. You know, you Mm -hmm. can enlighten people with comedy. Comedy doesn't always have to be just goofs and laughs. You can educate them and and throw a comedy twist in it and people are going to get it and people don't get it. You know, 90% of my fans get it. 10% just have to complain and they go on my page and argue with everyone else. You know, I think you're homophobic. I'm like, well, you're, you couldn't be more wrong because I'd rather yeah. hang out with gay guys than straight guys. I said, yeah. because they, they compliment my eyelashes. They build up my self-esteem. Okay. And if I'm wearing something that goes together, they're going to point it out and high five me for my choices. So, you know, straight guys don't understand how much work goes into an outfit. So. <laughs> 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 I'm glad I complimented the hoodie. That really, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that was oh. you. Just, you 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 won me after that. I mean, shit. How'd the interview go? <laughs> Compliment my hoodie. So he was aces in my book. So it was a, it was a success. That's great. The only thing he could have improved from there was telling me my eyelashes are majestic. But you know, we don't have to go there. Yeah, he he, he could have toned down on the the, the delicious diarrhea, but he could right. Yeah, he told me I delicious feces. I don't know. I don't know how he took that, but, uh, but yeah, man, yeah. listen, society's fucked up right now. Um, I think we just have to get back to treating everybody with a little bit of respect, a little bit of decency, who gives a shit what their preference and who cares what their political views are. Yes, I've never yes, in my life yes. seen politics hold so much weight when it comes to two people getting along. It's like, you know, Dude. before it was like, Hey, what's your favorite color? What movies do you like? What's your favorite food? What do you like to drink on the weekends? Now yeah. it's like, who'd you vote for? Ooh, yeah, no, this can't go any further. I don't give a yeah. shit who you voted for. You know, can you imagine if like, how old are you, by the way? 32. All right, so you, 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 you're eight years younger. I remember no. going out in my 20s and like, as stupid as it sounds, what's going on now is equivalent to me, like meeting a girl at a club and having a blast three hours non-stop talking dancing <clears throat> drinking boom she comes back to my place we start going at it clothes are being flung all over the place high heels are being thrown we are both completely naked i'm ready to just jump on her and i go wait wait i forgot what what political party are you with <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't give a shit if she sacrificed a kitten when she was younger at that point. Like, and, and it's, I have friends that don't talk to each other anymore because they stand on opposite sides of the political fence. And it's, it's sad, man. People yeah. right now, they want to hang out with only people that agree with them. And if everyone was the same and everyone agreed with each other in this world, we would be boring as shit. Yeah. I, I like the fact totally that I don't like agree. a lot of things about my wife. I'm not going to get divorced because it's too expensive, but I'll deal with her. <laughs> you know, I'm going to yeah. make sure she doesn't watch this because I'm also I, petrified of her. <laughs> I, I think we need to take a page out of the Italians book where there are so many different soccer teams that they can root for, whether it's yeah. like AC Milan, Inter, Juventus. But you know what? They still get along with each other, even though they, for the Inter most part, fans hate. Yeah, that's true. That's then true. Again, there you are had, some... you know, had two uncles of mine that don't talk for 14 years over a baby goat so you know you have that one of my uncles gave money to my uncle to get a, a goat for easter he brought back a baby goat apparently it wasn't up to weight and still charged him for an adult goat we're talking like three dollars and 80 cents and they don't talk anymore because he thinks he charged them the adult goat price for a baby goat and i'm like what the fuck is going on are you serious I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a goat and they won't talk. So it, it, you don't always want to take a page out of their book. We're getting along because oh, okay. Italians. Whew, yeah. You'll have like somebody from Sicily won't talk to somebody from Naples. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah, very I mean, true. I had an old lady at my show walk away from me. She comes up to me and she loved me at first a little 80 year old lady. I mean, she was like four feet. She looked like a little garden gnome and she comes up to me and she's like, um, Hey, I really like your show. I said, thank you. I appreciate that. I like the fact that you're shorter than me. It makes me feel good. And she goes, because I'm, I'm like five, six and three quarters. So it doesn't happen. I can't rest my arm on anything. So I'm like, you like the show? Yeah, I like your show. It's very funny. It's different than, than a YubiTube. I said, yeah, yeah, a little different from YubTube. Yeah. I said, uh, what did you like the most? So she goes, oh, when you talk about your family and your father. She goes, but uh -huh. can I ask you a question? Because me and my daughter-in-law, we argue about this. I said, yeah, what's up? You... I can tell it from your eyes. A very handsome young man. You're Sicilian. I go, no. Mm -mm. She goes, what do you mean, no? And you already see her face starting to turn. And I said, no, I'm Nabolitan. I'm from, my family's from a little town outside of Naples. Nabolitan. I said, yeah. <laughs> she grabs her purse, clutches it. And I go, what's wrong? Nabolitan people, they're all thieves. You thief, son of a bitch. Thank you. Have a good night. And she walked away from me. I go, did I just experience inter-Italian racism? What the fuck was that? And her daughter came up to me. She goes, you upset my mother, but I apologize. I go, I upset your mother. I go, You're, I want to hang out with your mother again. That was classic. She just, she went from <laughs> loving me to wanting to punch me right in my face because of the region of Italy my family's from. That's, I, so that's how they are, man. So you don't, you don't necessarily want Italians to uh to teach people how to get along i don't know if that's a good idea that is very very true i didn't my yeah. family's from the north near um near milan too yeah. so they're not fans of sicilians either or the calabrese so they i yeah. don't know so yeah my, my I take wife back is, that statement my wife is calabrese when i when i uh, told my father I was getting married um uh -huh. he said uh he goes she's a calabrese i said yeah 100 percent. i said yeah I think you make a mistake, but you got my blessing. And I said, what? He goes, I think you make a big mistake. Anthony, if you take a woman and she's a calabrese and you take the head off with a saw, cut the head, take it off. Before you get to the brain, there's about three inches of brick. You got to penetrate. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh my God. And I'm listening to him. Like he's giving me medical help. I'm like all tuned in. He's like, and then you got to chisel the brick and hope you don't damage the brain and then you could talk to them because if not, they're not gonna listen to you. They better take at it. I said, you couldn't just say they're stubborn. You had to go through like a fucking a brain operation. What is wrong with you? And, and How, then he said, yeah. Good. And then he gave me his buster. That was amazing. It's almost like that was a story passed down by generation after generation. Oh, it was. The mythical Calabres, so. No, they're not mythical. They're very, they're very real. <laughs> very real 
Oh man. Well, Anthony, we're going to wrap it up, but before we do, we have a couple questions from yeah, fans yeah. that they send in where we give some advice to just random questions that they find on the internet from okay. uh, probably a lot of idiots. So we've got some silly questions, Shoot. silly advice. All right. This first one is found on Reddit from our fan James. He's and uh, this question. It says, I suffer from misophonia, which means some noises make me anxious, angry, and agitated. One of the sounds that triggers me the most is a sound that my mom makes. She started making this sound out of the blue 10 years ago. It's like she has mucus on her throat and makes a pig-like noise to bring it up and spit it out. Oh. Yeah, I, he didn't write that, but that was just my imagination. No. She should know that this sound is irritating, but she doesn't stop. How can I get her to stop doing it? So it's either that noise you did or it's something that my manager Dom does which every time he does, I want to stab him in the face with a pencil. <laughs> no, that's the urge I get. It's like, he'll scratch his throat with his throat. Like he'll go. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh no. Dom, Dom. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like allergies. That's not allergies. It's just an annoying habit. So what, like what an was alien trying to break its way out of yeah, your it's esophagus. It's just weird. So what, what was his final question? He, he just, you lost me with the, <clears throat> Oh, what, what she wants, or he wants to get their mom to stop making this noise. I would, I mean, so, I was going to, I was going to ask you if you knew somebody that makes an annoying noise and it sounds no, like, no, but I know how to deal of... with annoying people. Um, <laughs> the best way to deal with an annoying person, have them stop doing something annoying is to do what they're doing to them. So if it's that oh. annoying, chances are people are triggered and annoyed by some of the same things that they do. But when they do it, they don't realize it. So I would go next to your mom every minute of every day and just suck snot right into your throat. Just sit there and just go, hey, what's up, mom? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and like over, over, over elaborate on it. Just totally, you know, uh, push the arm push i like that i i love and that go go beyond and make sleep sounds so that when your mom correct. says alexa can you play sleep sounds for me it's like okay yes and yeah then she's yeah. gonna be like but just oh, do Lord. it back to your mom and i guarantee you, your mom will say how annoying it is and then you'll point out that it's annoying to you when she does it and then she'll deny that she does it and then you video her and show her she does it nailed it i i couldn't think of any better way that's Beautiful. All right. We've got this last question. It's from Reddit found by our fan Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. It says, mm -hmm. how to get along with my daughter. My daughter is 18 year old. She hates any advice from me about her life. I want to reduce her screen time. I had bought a blue light protecty glass to protect her eyes. How should I give it to her and make her accept without any angry? You shouldn't. But, yeah. Fair. Okay. You're going to put a screen protector to, to, to block her from blue light. I mean, you could try, just grab her phone when she's sleeping and put it on. She's your daughter. And I'm sure you pay the phone. So that phone is yours. It's not your daughter's. Um, but well, I, I don't idea. know, man, like all these worries that parents have nowadays, we didn't, our parents didn't have them back then, you know, you know, Oh, don't sit too close to the TV. It's going to you know mess up your eyesight. I don't know if these phones are going to do anything, but if it's that much of a concern, your daughter falls asleep. Put the damn lens on the phone. I'm sure she won't even tell the difference. Um, to limit her screen time, good luck. My daughter's five, and I can't limit her screen time. Dude, she I she would... rules the house. Uh, my wife and I, we have to ask her permission if we can both go out to dinner. Um, so <laughs> when you said, oh, it's true. When you said it's an 18-year-old daughter, I got uh, back sweats because that's my worst fear is my daughter becoming 18 and just totally like I'm her little bitch. But um, I think kids today have it way easier than we had. Um, if I didn't listen to my father the first time, I'd feel the second time. And kids today aren't, aren't raised like that. But um, take the phone. Take the phone. Put the lens on. You pay for it. And if you yeah. want, if you really want to go that route, she can actually <clears throat> limit the amount of Wi-Fi she gets in the house. You can go on the computer and set when your phone is in, is able to surf the web. So like a friend of mine has his 14 year old daughter after eight o'clock, her phone shuts off until eight o'clock the next day where she can't go on social media. She can't go on the internet. She can't do anything with her phone. Oh, dang. So that's that big a of a idea. problem. Listen, my thing is the only reason that it's a problem is that she's not getting sleep and she's not excelling in school. 
if she's doing well in school and she's getting sleep and she's not a royal bitch all the time, let her be a kid. That, that's, my, that's my thing. My kids, as long as they respect us and respect their elders and their relatives and they're nice to people, they're not total little douchebags, they're going to continue to get things that I buy them. And the minute that they don't act the way they should, they those things get taken away. So if she's doing yeah. well in school and she's sleeping and she's not a, a, you know, a total bitch all the time, then... <clears throat> let her go on her phone. If she is step in, you're the parent, you pay for it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. I feel like a lot of parents are worried about screen time being like, you know what, you only have 15 yeah. minutes or an hour or whatever, but I mean, technology has been around for how long and Correct. we've been, we've been continuing to progress, I think. Yeah. So like, and I, I think I had a, a hard... another big problem is these parents. And sometimes I fall into that trap. My wife falls. These parents are so concerned about being their child's friend. You're, you're not your child's friend. You could be friendly with your child. You can have a bond, but you're that child's parent. So don't ever, you know, worry about pissing your kid off. I mean, I, I don't think my parents gave a shit how I felt half the time. They were the parent and that's it. And my father always said it. You don't like the rules. The door's right there. Go pay for your own place and you can have your own rules. So, yeah. And after that's, that's like every special. phone call, you guys say, I love you, dad. I love you, son. So it seems like that's guys... all for show. That's for the show. <laughs> no, you know, I, I've, I'm a lot nicer and closer to both my parents now because I'm a, I'm a parent and I see how quick it goes. So yeah, I can just yeah. imagine from them. I mean, I'm already looking at my daughter's pictures when she was born, you know, and I'll, I'll start getting all teary eyed on the couch at like 12 o'clock at night. So I can just mm -hmm. imagine my parents and uh, and obviously what's been going on in my life, you know, I'm, I, uh, you know, they see the success, they see that it's growing. Um, and, uh, you know, they back me the whole time. So I'm a lot nicer to them now. I was, a, I was a pain in the ass, um, in my teens and my early twenties. I was, oof. if it's coming back to me, I'm in trouble. I'm going to need therapy. Yeah. I, same, same. I, I remember I, I'm old school, man. Treat, treat your parents like they're like, you know, you life can change in a heartbeat. So, I just, I, I try to enjoy every minute and, uh, you know, I try to make up for uh, the times that I was a complete asshole to my parents. So I'm like super nice now. I'm like, hey, mom, um, I'm buying you a truck. And she's like, really? Yeah, yeah, I was a jackass up until I was 27. So hopefully this makes up for it and I get to be placed back into the will. That's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I got my mom an iPad yesterday and I was like, you can do no screen time control either. You can <laughs> yeah, don't live you Go on it as long as you want. And if you want the glass for the blue light, which I don't even know what the hell blue light is. Um, actually, if, her, if that lady's if that lady's seeing blue light, she might need the lens. I'm thinking about I've never seen blue light come out of my phone. That might. Yeah, that might be a problem with the manufacturer of the phone. You might want to get that checked out. She might need glasses. She might have what they call blue retina. Ooh, so, that, yeah. That's not an insurance company. That sounds bad. I don't even know if that's a thing. It just sounded really good. You have blue retina. <laughs> blue retina. Yeah, that sounds like a superpower, like a, yeah. a superhuman. Yeah. Shit, that guy's got blue retina. <laughs> it does sound like an insurance company. Yeah, who are you with? Blue Cross Blue Shield? No, I'm actually with Blue Retina. They have no, they have no copay. So. <laughs> yeah, vision's yeah. free. So. Are they a democratic insurance company? <laughs> if they're blue? No. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, we've reached the end of the show, Anthony. So first off, I awesome. just want to give you a huge thank you for coming. Oh, no, listen, I had fun. I love these Zoom things. Oh, awesome. And I'm really excited to see you in Phoenix, Arizona at the Tempe Improv. Are you coming? I am. Awesome. I am. What night? Oh, my God. Wait, it's not sold out, is it? Because I haven't bought my ticks yet. No, but Saturday night would probably be the show to go to. Saturday night's almost sold out. I think there's like, I don't know, 15 tickets left to Saturday night. Okay. All right. I'll make yeah. it Saturday. Saturday it's going to be packed. Um, but I mean, th but then Friday is going to sell out because Saturday sells out. We have, we have a, a week to go, so it should be good. But uh, yeah, no, nice. I'm pretty excited, nice. man. My first time on the West coast. So we'll see how the, uh, how the West coast fans do. Everyone's like, you gotta be, you gotta be gentle. I'm like, then they're not going to enjoy the show. Cause I can't be gentle. <laughs> You're going to be fine. It's going to be great. Yeah. I'm It'll excited, awesome. man. People need to laugh. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Everybody's just, they want to get out of their house and be able to enjoy and, and yeah. the Tempe improv is being really safe about it. So it's, it's a really, really good time. But, but yeah. I wanted to ask too, what else did you uh, got going on? What would you like to plug anything else? Where can people follow? Um, you? Yeah. I mean, just go, go to rodeacomedy.com. Um, I'm going to be all across the country uh, after 
after uh, the Tempe Improv. Um, got a couple dates local around here in New York, Jersey, and then I go to uh, I go to Rhode Island. Rhode Island's crazy, man. So they have a minimized huh. capacity, but uh, we were scheduled for the 25th to the 28th. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the 25th to the 27th. Originally, one show mm -hmm. Thursday, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. That sold out. I think all five shows sold out in three days. And then we just keep okay. adding. Right now we're up to one show Thursday, two shows Friday, three shows Saturday, three shows on Sunday. So we're up to nine. And I'm like, guys, I'll do one more and make it 10. But I'm going to Florida for 10 days with my family the next, literally the next day I come back. And I don't want to die, you know, from exhaustion. Yeah, um, yeah. So oh. Rhode Island, big, big fan base in Rhode Island. And then April, um, we're back in Jersey for a couple of shows. And then May, we're back down in Florida. So, I mean, the, the schedules, we, I think we have 20 shows in March, 15, 20 shows in April. Things are starting to open up. And uh, nice. just anywhere I'm at, I always put it on RodeaComedy.com or my Instagram, I'll announce it or Facebook. So that's, that's probably the best way to find out. Nice. Awesome. And links will, links will be in the show notes so listeners can just awesome. go down there and click. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, Anthony, this was such a blast. And yeah, I had uh, fun. thank you again. I had fun. No, thanks for having me. I'm going to go back upstairs. Uh, my wife came down twice. Um, if you ever notice, I twitch once in a while. It's because she's in the vicinity and I'm, I'm nervous. She gave me the, uh, the laser beam stare. You know, she came then. She, she, and mind you, you come downstairs in my basement. I've got my little section, my little area where my computer is and all my editing stuff. I've got uh -huh. two big umbrella lights pointing at me. You can see it when you come down in my basement. She uh -huh. comes down. She literally walks all the way up to me. She goes, oh, you're still on the podcast? No, I'm, I've got a meeting with Steven Spielberg right now, and I'm actually shooting a scene for our next move. There's umbrella lights in the, in, in the basement. What, what do you think I'm doing? You're like, I'm trying to get rid of the blue lights here. This, right. Uh, the, the bright yellow ones. She like there. pokes all the way around. She's like, oh, you're still on the podcast. <laughs> that means... The kids are driving me crazy. Get your ass upstairs and be a dad and stop playing on the computer. That's what that all meant. So, trying to control the screen time. I get it. Yeah. My wife does I'm the same I'm gonna thing. Go up there. I'm going to mess with her now. I'm going to go. I think we're. I think we're getting too much blue light. I think I've. I don't know. If, <laughs> but Stefan said I might have blue retina. <laughs> what is that? It's a democratic eye disease. It's a democratic, and it's also an insurance company. Obviously. Yeah, it's an insurance company founded by Bernie Sanders, Lou Retina. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and, and see, and see, if you notice what I do, like that's why I can't stand when people are like, oh, you're homophobic. I don't know why I do this. When I get into an explanation, I switch into a gay guy. If you listen, I get very lispy. Like when people ask me, I get very flamboyant. You know, they're like, Oh, how's uh, your relationship with your wife? I'm like, We're good. You know, she's sometimes <laughs> very aggressive. She's, you know, she throws things. She's an aerial combat person. She hits me with flying objects. I get very flamboyant. I don't know why. It's like my comfort zone. But I mean, whatever. It is. It's just, it's another part of my brain that needs to be medically diagnosed. So one day, one day we'll it's, find out what the fuck is wrong with me. Oh, man. Well, it's a good, all of your voices are really good. And I mean, even like you said earlier, where your wife comes down, you're doing a conversation with yourself, yeah. the, that ability in action, like when you did that prank call at the hotel with both oh, the double Uncle voice. Vinny and yeah. Dia Lucia, I was like, oh my God, that's amazing how you were just able to go back and forth. So yeah, it's nuts. It's, it's crazy. crazy. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound like a bougie asshole, but um, <laughs> it's, I, I get comics asking me all the time. And I'm like, they're like, how hard is it to constantly stay irrelevant? You know, and with yeah. the new material and the voices, I'm like, dude, it's, it's not hard. It, Goomba Johnny has literally seen me write 15 minutes of comedy in five minutes on a plane. And he's like, dude, I hate how easy this comes to you. And it, it does. I just, I think when you have a knack for something and you're yeah. so, you're so like zoned into it. Um, like I tell people all the time, if I can give the best comedy advice on how to write, um, they're like, how do you constantly, like, how, why are you not afraid to try new material in front of a packed crowd? Like I had a show at Foxwoods, a thousand people. I tried new material and they're like, why would you do that? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't write material based on what I think is going to be funny. I write material based on what I think the majority of the crowd is going to relate to. If you go to a comedy show and that person is talking about something that hits close to home, like for instance, I talk about being 40 years old 
and the shit that happens to me. Now, it could have happened to me years ago. I just pay attention to everything more than I'm 40. Like I'll have a lump on one side of my head and I'll feel if it's on the other. So it's not like a tumor or something, right? I'm like, oh, f- okay. Thank God. That's just my scalp. I never did that at 30, 35. Another no. thing that, you know, and, and, and this just, just, I just know I'm not the only one. I'll drop my pants before I go into the shower. And this is when you turn a certain age, your body starts telling you, dude, you got to start working out. We're getting a little fat. I'll, I'll reach down and the band to my underwear is folded in half. That's the most degrading thing that your body can do to itself is fold your underwear band in half. Cause that's telling you your stomach got so relaxed that it just dropped and folded <laughs> your underwear band. It sucks. But that's how I write my comedy. I write it based on who I think is going to relate. And if it's relatable, it's funny, man. So I uh, mean, that I, people is, ask me all the time. That is absolutely hilarious. First off, the quote, I, I think that should be a quote somewhere that, that it's so important for everybody that's aspiring to be a comic or whatever. I feel like that is gold where look for what is relatable because people yeah. have a strong, it's beyond just a laugh. It's also like, Oh my God, me too. And I feel like that's super, super important. And then I also was, oh, go ahead. No, again. Oh, I was just uh, gonna say, I also, I wonder, you know how there's that little pocket in your jeans and no one knows what it's for. I wonder if that's what the band for the underwear is where it's like fat shaming you. Or it's like, oh no, I put out a little too many. The band is just- I, I can't even fit chapstick into that little pocket. I don't know what, my father said it's for change. I'm like, what do you work on a fucking ice cream truck? You, I'm like, what do you mean change? It's one pocket for, you can't even fit quarters in there. It's just a, it's a pocket for dimes. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's you super. might be onto some. It's just, dude, it's so, it's like every time I, I see it folded, I'm just like, I got to start working out. And it's just, yeah. every day. like my wife said, she goes, how much weight do you want to lose? And I said, I want my underwears to stop folding. And she's like, what? I go, I want to take off my pants and have my underwears the same way they were when I put them on. I don't fold them when I put them on. It's not like I'm putting a hem in my underwear because I wanted to like ride low on my waist. I want my underwears to stop folding. And I, that's, that's my I, I'm just going to cut off the band because I'm sick of that happening to me too. Dude, I'm not it's even so wearing pants right now because I don't want to get depressed while this interview is <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm a hoodie and no pants. I look like a fucking Disney character. I look like Piglet right now from Winnie the Pooh just <laughs> just doing an interview <laughs> oh my god just the honey on the side dip it yeah in. I'm just for... <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm just sitting here as, as... I, I love how I said piglet because I'm short and you just went right to Winnie the Pooh because I'm kind of chunky <laughs> no, no, like, yeah no. you got that honey on the side you fat bastard <laughs> No, I have the, the four from here. The angles are great. I mean, you look it's fine. It must be the lighting because I feel like a bloated whale right now. <laughs> like a you look very, You look very svelte. Maybe it's the, the hoodie is also very slimming. The hat. I don't know. Yeah, you look great. I think the hoodie is like a double X. Oh, man. Well, hey, got, it looks yeah. like a small. But hey, thank you so much, <laughs> Anthony. This was no, my pleasure, man. I had a blast. This was fun. Awesome. Well, I will. I'm gonna. Me and my wife will see you on um, on Saturday. Awesome. Yeah. Listen. Come backstage. Oh, come backstage. I'm- yeah. Come backstage. Actually, I keep moving this. Testing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Come backstage. Have a drink. I'll be back. There. Oh. Oh yeah. That'd be awesome. Awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, no, my well, pleasure, man. The, yeah. This was awesome. Good luck with your wife and kid going back upstairs. And uh, yeah, yeah, I hear them. Now. I'm gonna walk into a war zone. Oh, I'm no. go upstairs and get like pelted with a Lego. Oh no. It's Hopefully so fun. So I'll get off this nice and calm. I'm like, hey man, thanks, man. I had a great time. All right, click. You guys are fucking driving. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I did that at the end of one podcast and I never left the room. And like the two guys interviewing me, they were like, and I looked back, I was like, and scene. What'd you think, huh? Doing an audition afterwards. All right. Well, you guys have a good night. Sorry that you almost seen child abuse firsthand. Click. And I just got off. And I'm like, dude, if, if that podcast doesn't air, they're calling the cops. 100%. They just saw me threaten my whole family. I think I told my oh. daughter, I was like, I'm bringing all your toys outside and I'm throwing them in a fucking fire pit. It's going to be a Barbie execution. <laughs> and then I just turned around. I saw two faces staring at me. I'm like, end scene.
<laughs> huh? What'd you guys think? Was that convincing? <laughs> and they're like, uh-huh. We'll let you know when it airs. But I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, oh my God. That's yeah, hilarious. So. Uh, well, that's... Oh, that's- all right, man. Listen, I'll, I'll see you Saturday. And uh, like I said, come back with your wife, have a drink, and uh, I'll be on my Arizona A game. Awesome. Well, sounds good, man. And uh, yeah, have a good time, and I'll see you soon. You too. Thank All you, right. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Evan. you. Take care, man. You got it. Bye-bye.